Book One, Chapter Nineteen of the Antiquities of the Jews, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Antiquities of the Jews, Volume One by Flavius Josephus, translated by William Whiston. Book One, Chapter Nineteen. Concerning Jacob's flight into Mesopotamia by reason of the fear he was in of his brother. Now Jacob was sent by his mother to Mesopotamia, in order to marry Laban her brother's daughter, which marriage was permitted by Isaac on account of his obsequiousness to the desires of his wife, and he accordingly journeyed through the land of Canaan, and because he hated the people of that country, he would not lodge with any of them, but took up his lodging in the open air, and laid his head on a heap of stones that he had gathered together. At which time he saw in his sleep such a vision standing by him. He seemed to see a ladder that reached from the earth unto heaven, and persons descending upon the ladder that seemed more excellent than human. And at last God himself stood above it, and was plainly visible to him, who, calling him by his name, spake to him in these words. O oh, Jacob, it is not fit for thee, who art the son of a good father, and grandson of one who had obtained a great reputation for his eminent virtue, to be dejected at thy present circumstances, but to hope for better times, for thou shalt have great abundance of all good things by my assistance. For I brought Abraham hither out of Mesopotamia, when he was driven away by his kinsmen, and I made thy father a happy man, nor will I bestow a lesser degree of happiness on thyself. Be of good courage, therefore, and under my conduct proceed on this thy journey, for the marriage thou goest so zealously about shall be consummated. And thou shalt have children of good characters, but their multitude shall be innumerable, and they shall leave what they have to a still more numerous posterity, to whom and to whose posterity I give the dominion of all the land, and their posterity shall fill the entire earth and sea, so far as the sun beholds them. But do not thou fear any longer, nor be afraid of the many labors thou must undergo, for by my providence I will direct thee what thou art to do in the time present, and still much more in the time to come. Such were the predictions which God made to Jacob, whereupon he became very joyful at what he had seen and heard and he poured oil on the stones, because on them the prediction of such great benefits was made. He also vowed a vow that he would offer sacrifices upon them if he lived and returned safe, and if he came again in such a condition, he would give the tithe of what he had gotten to God. He also judged the place to be honorable, and gave it the name of Bethel, which in the Greek is interpreted the house of God. So he proceeded on his journey to Mesopotamia, and at length came to Haran, and meeting with shepherds in the suburbs, with boys grown up, and maidens sitting about a certain well, he stayed with them as wanting water to drink, and beginning to discourse with them, he asked them whether they knew such a one as Laban, and whether he was still alive. Now they all said they knew him, for he was not so inconsiderable a person as to be unknown to any of them and that his daughter fed her father's flock together with them, and that indeed they wondered that she was not yet come, for by her means thou mightest learn more exactly whatever thou desirest to know about that family. While they were saying this, the damsel came, and the other shepherds that came down along with her. Then they showed her Jacob, and told her that he was a stranger, who came to inquire about her father's affairs. But she, as pleased, after the custom of children, with Jacob's coming, asked him who he was, and whence he came to them, and what it was he lacked that he came thither. She also wished it might be in their power to supply the wants he came about. But Jacob was quite overcome, not so much by their kindred, nor by that affection which might arise thence, as by his love to the damsel, and his surprise at her beauty which was so flourishing, as few of the women of that age could vie with. He said then, There is a relation between thee and me, elder than either thy or my birth, if thou be the daughter of Laban. 
for Abraham was the son of Terah, as well as Haran and Nahor, of the last of whom, Nahor, Bethuel thy grandfather was the son. Isaac my father was the son of Abraham and of Sarah, who was the daughter of Haran. But there is a nearer and later cement of mutual kindred, which we bear to one another, for my mother Rebekah was sister to Laban thy father, both by the same father and mother. I, therefore, and thou are cousin Germans. And I am now come to salute you, and to renew that affinity which is proper between us. Upon this the damsel, at the mention of Rebecca, as usually happens to young persons, wept, and that out of the kindness she had for her father, and embraced Jacob, she having learned an account of Rebecca from her father, and knew that her parents loved to hear her named. And when she had saluted him, she said that he brought the most desirable and greatest pleasures to her father, with all their family, who was always mentioning his mother, and always thinking of her and her alone, and that this will make thee equal in his eyes to any advantageous circumstances whatsoever. Then she bid him go to her father, and follow her while she conducted him to him, and not to deprive him of such a pleasure by staying any longer away from him. When she had said thus, she brought him to Laban, and being owned by his uncle, he was secure himself as being among his friends, and he brought a great deal of pleasure to them by his unexpected coming. But a little while afterward Laban told him that he could not express in words the joy he had at his coming, but still he inquired of him the occasion of his coming, and why he left his aged mother and father when they wanted to be taken care of by him and that he would afford him all the assistance he wanted. Then Jacob gave him an account of the whole occasion of his journey, and told him that Isaac had two sons that were twins, himself and Esau, who, because he failed of his father's prayers, which by his mother's wisdom were put up for him, sought to kill him, as deprived of the kingdom which was to be given him of God, and of the blessings for which their father prayed, and that this was the occasion of his coming hither, as his mother had commanded him to do. For we are all, says he, brethren one to another, but our mother esteems an alliance with your family more than she does one with the families of the country. So I look upon yourself and God to be the supporters of my travels, and think myself safe in my present circumstances. Now Laban promised to treat him with great humanity, both on account of his ancestors and particularly for the sake of his mother, towards whom, he said, he would show his kindness, even though she were absent, by taking care of him. For he assured him he would make him the head shepherd of his flock, and give him authority sufficient for that purpose. And when he should have a mind to return to his parents, he would send him back with presents, and this in as honorable a manner as the nearness of their relation should require. This Jacob heard gladly, and said he would willingly and with pleasure undergo any sort of pains while he tarried with him, but desired Rachel to wife as the reward of those pains, who was not only on other accounts esteemed by him, but also because she was the means of his coming to him, for he said he was forced by the love of the damsel to make this proposal. Laban was well pleased with this agreement, and consented to give the damsel to him, as not desirous to meet with any better son-in-law, and said he would do this if he would stay with him some time, for he was not willing to send his daughter to be among the Canaanites, for he repented of the alliance he had made already by marrying his sister there. And when Jacob had given his consent to this, he agreed to stay seven years. For so many years he had resolved to serve his father-in-law, that, having given a specimen of his virtue, it might be better known what sort of a man he was. And Jacob, accepting of his terms, after the time was over, he made the wedding feast, and when it was night, without Jacob's perceiving it, he put his other daughter into bed to him, who was both elder than Rachel, and of no comely countenance. Jacob lay with her that night as being both in drink and in the dark. However, when it was day, he knew what had been done to him, and he reproached Laban for his unfair proceeding with him, who asked pardon for that necessity which forced him to do what he did, 
for he did not give him Leah out of any ill design, but as overcome by another greater necessity, that, notwithstanding this, nothing should hinder him from marrying Rachel, but that when he had served another seven years, he would give him her whom he loved. Jacob submitted to this condition, for his love to the damsel did not permit him to do otherwise. And when another seven years were gone, he took Rachel to wife. Now each of these had handmaids, by their father's donation. Zilpha was handmaid to Leah, and Bilhah to Rachel, by no means slaves, but however subject to their mistresses. Now Leah was sorely troubled at her husband's love to her sister, and she expected she should be better esteemed if she bare him children. So she entreated God perpetually, and when she had borne a son, and her husband was on that account better reconciled to her, she named her son Rubel, because God had had mercy upon her in giving her a son, for that is the signification of this name. After some time she bore three more sons, Simeon, which name signifies that God had hearkened to her prayer. Then she bare Levi, the confirmer of their friendship. After him was born Judah, which denotes thanksgiving. But Rachel, fearing lest the fruitfulness of her sister should make herself enjoy a lesser share of Jacob's affections, put to bed to him her handmaid Bilhah, by whom Jacob had Dan. One may interpret that name into the Greek tongue, a divine judgment. And after him, Nephthalim, as it were, unconquerable in stratagems, since Rachel tried to conquer the fruitfulness of her sister by this stratagem. Accordingly, Leah took the same method, and used a counter-stratagem to that of her sister, for she put to bed to him her own handmaid. Jacob, therefore, had by Zilpha a son, whose name was Gad, which may be interpreted fortune, and after him Asher, which may be called a happy man, because he added glory to Leah. Now Rubel, the eldest son of Leah, brought apples of mandrakes to his mother. When Rachel saw them, she desired that she would give her the apples, for she longed to eat them. But when she refused, and bid her be content that she had deprived her of the benevolence she ought to have had from her husband, Rachel, in order to mitigate her sister's anger, said she would yield her husband to her, and he should lie with her that evening. She accepted of the favor, and Jacob slept with Leah by the favor of Rachel. She bare then these sons, Issachar, denoting one born by hire, and Zebulun, one born as a pledge of benevolence towards her, and a daughter, Dinah. After some time, Rachel had a son named Joseph, which signified there should be another added to him. Now Jacob fed the flocks of Laban his father-in-law all this time, being twenty years, after which he desired leave of his father-in-law to take his wives and go home. But when his father-in-law would not give him leave, he contrived to do it secretly. He made trial, therefore, of the disposition of his wives, what they thought of this journey, when they appeared glad and approved of it. Rachel took along with her the images of the gods, which, according to their laws, they used to worship in their own country, and ran away together with her sister. The children also of them both, and the handmaids, and what possessions they had, went along with them. Jacob also drove away half the cattle, without letting Laban know of it beforehand. But the reason why Rachel took the images of the gods, although Jacob had taught her to despise such worship of those gods, was this, that in case they were pursued and taken by her father, she might have recourse to these images in order to obtain his pardon. But Laban, after one day's time, being acquainted with Jacob's and his daughter's departure, was much troubled and pursued after them, leading a band of men with him, and on the seventh day overtook them, and found them resting on a certain hill, and then indeed he did not meddle with them, for it was eventide. But God stood by him in a dream, and warned him to receive his son-in-law and his daughters in a peaceable manner, and not to venture upon anything rashly or in wrath, but to make a league with Jacob. And he told him that if he despised their small number, and attacked them in a hostile manner, he would himself assist them. 
When Laban had been thus forewarned by God, he called Jacob to him the next day, in order to treat with him, and showed him what dream he had. In dependence whereupon, he came confidently to him, and began to accuse him, alleging that he had entertained him when he was poor, and in want of all things, and had given him plenty of all things which he had. For, said he, I have joined my daughters to thee in marriage, and supposed that thy kindness to me be greater than before. But thou hast had no regard to either thy mother's relations to me, nor to the affinity now newly contracted between us, nor to those wives whom thou hast married, nor to those children, of whom I am the grandfather. Thou hast treated me as an enemy, driving away my cattle, and by persuading my daughters to run away from their father, and by carrying home those sacred paternal images which were worshipped by my forefathers, and have been honoured with the like worship which they paid them by myself. In short, thou hast done this whilst thou art my kinsman, and my sister's son, and the husband of my daughters, and was hospitably treated by me, and didst eat at my table. When Laban had said this, Jacob made his defence, that he was not the only person in whom God had implanted the love of his native country, but that he had made it natural to all men, and that therefore it was but reasonable that, after so long time, he should go back to it. But as to the prey, of whose driving away thou accusest me, if any other person were the arbitrator, thou wouldst be found in the wrong, for instead of those thanks I ought to have had from thee, for both keeping thy cattle and increasing them, how is it that thou art unjustly angry at me, because I have taken, and have with me, a small portion of them? But then, as to thy daughters, take notice that it is not through any evil practices of mine that they follow me in my return home, but from that just affection which wives naturally have to their husbands. They follow, therefore, not so properly myself as their own children. And thus far of his apology was made, in order to clear himself of having acted unjustly. To which he added his own complaint and accusation of Laban, saying, While I was thy sister's son, and thou hadst given me thy daughters in marriage, thou hast worn me out with thy harsh commands, and detained me twenty years under them that indeed which was required in order to my marrying thy daughters, hard as it was, I own to have been tolerable. But as to those that were put upon me after those marriages, they were worse, and such indeed as an enemy would have avoided. For certainly Laban had used Jacob very ill, for when he saw that God was assisting to Jacob in all that he desired, he promised him that of the young cattle which should be born, he should have sometimes what was of a white color, and sometimes what should be of a black color. But when those that came to Jacob's share proved numerous, he did not keep his faith with him, but said he would give them to him the next year, because of his envying him the multitude of his possessions. He promised him as before, because he thought such an increase was not to be expected. But when it appeared to be fact, he deceived him. But then, as to the sacred images, he bid him search for them, and when Laban accepted of the offer, Rachel, being informed of it, put those images into that camel's saddle on which she rode, and sat upon it, and said that her natural purgation hindered her rising up. So Laban left off searching any further, not supposing that his daughter in such circumstances would approach to those images. So he made a league with Jacob, and bound it by oaths, that he would not bear him any malice on account of what had happened. And Jacob made the like league, and promised to love Laban's daughters. And these leagues they confirmed with oaths also, which they made upon certain mountains, whereupon they erected a pillar in the form of an altar, whence that hill is called Gilead, and from thence they call that land the land of Gilead at this day. Now when they had feasted, after the making of the league, Laban returned home. End of Book 1, Chapter 19